I swear, I wear this goddamn flannel so much, it's gonna very quickly just become part of the mascot of who I am on this channel. I mean, shit. At events, wearing this flannel is how I've been spotted the most as of recently. It's almost like people, like, have it hard-coded in their brain. Look for the red and black patchwork flannel. That's where the Phoenix Man's is. That's where he be. That's the secret. This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video we're going to be talking about another new fairy spoiled for release in the new fairy structure deck R that's coming out in the OCG. Now, I actually don't know if we've been given a date on that's release date drop yet. I'm going to have to definitely double check into that one because based off if a date exists or not, that means we should be getting more information in a more structured time frame or not. So, I don't know if a date for that's been announced or not yet, so I definitely want to check into that one. But anyway, the new fairy that we have access to in terms of information today is Angel Sage Minerva. At least that's its tentative translated to English name from the Japanese name. Its name could be completely different or at least somewhat similar once it gets, you know, its actual TCG name. But regardless, you know how this should work by now. It is a level 4 light fairy effect monster with 1700 attack and 400 defense and it has a continuous effect of... Each time a counter trap card is activated, this card gains 500 attack immediately after it resolves. Also, if the Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field, add one counter trap with a different name from that activated card from your graveyard to your hand. So, this is an additional piece of support for basically counter fairies as a whole, going alongside Bountiful Artemis and Meltiel, Sage of the Sky, and all that sort of nonsense. Now. This card isn't really as amazing as I would have expected them to be giving new fairies to us as. Like, I was expecting a lot more out of, like, the other fairies that we'd be seeing out of this new structure deck to at least try to support Angel Knight, Arc Parshat's insane summoning condition. But at least this is another fairy that can be utilized in the bog standard counter fairy deck from what it seems. Now, it does require you to have the Sanctuary in the Sky on the field to gain its actual good effect, which that effect of add a counter trap that has a different name from the one you activated from your graveyard back to your hand, that's actually kind of legitimate because that means that you are going to be able to just have another card that just facilitates advantage for you. Especially if you have something like Ariadne in your scale and you're activating these counter traps for literally free. That means you're going to be able to activate Divine Providence 1, or not Divine Providence, Divine Punishment. Where did Providence come from? Ultimate Providence. That's the one. I combined literally two separate card names there. There's Divine Punishment that is a counter trap card that's literally Solemn Judgment if you have the Sanctuary in the Sky on the field. Meaning that... If you have Sanctuary in the Sky up, this card's good effect will be able to be triggered, meaning you could activate Divine Punishment. You have Ultimate Providence, that if you have Ariadne in your scale, you're being able to negate anything for free, essentially. You have your Strikes, you have your other counter traps, like Drastic Drop-Off, Solemn Warning. What other good counter traps are there? I don't even want to say Dark Bribe. That's like a meme. <laughs> but regardless, the the ability to add back counter traps is definitely definitely nice, and it requires Sanctuary in the Sky to be face upon the field, but that's never been a huge issue in the deck in the past nor now. I mean, if you were ever playing Meltiel, then you required Sanctuary in the Sky to get the good effect there too, so I mean there there's some things you need to consider here before you start just dismissing this card. Now do I think it's an instant three of in any counter fairy deck? No, not quite. Um it's definitely a good one or two of, probably. It's just, it's another good name to have in your deck to give further weight to Ties of the Brethren plays. That's actually where I think this card gets the most merit, is that beforehand, if you were using Ties of the Brethren, it was either on an Honest, on a Meltiel, on a Bountiful Artemis or whatever, and you're usually summoning like a Barrier Statue and an Honest to put back in your hand if Honest wasn't the card you were already using the Brethren on. But you're summoning, you're basically ending with Bountiful Artemis, a Barrier Statue, and an Honest that you're bouncing to your hand. But the thing is, the Barrier Statue is not really that amazing of a play. It was just the only other good fairy that we had access to outside of Meltiel. And for some reason, Meltiel has fallen out of favor 
in the Counter Fairy deck. I'm not quite sure why. It seems like it still fits perfectly fine, but I digress. This alongside Meltiel gives you a lot of actual variety that you could have with your Ties of the Brethren stuff, as well as play more cards that make your Ties of the Brethren live. Like you could play one or two of this, one or two Meltiels, then you've got your Triple Bountiful Artemis, and then things just sort of start happening. Now, this thing does have the ability to gain attack when the Sanctuary in the Sky is not on the board, and I mean, that's kind of still relevant, because if you activate three Counter Traps, which, like, you should ideally be ending every single one of your turns with two to three Counter Traps set, otherwise you're probably not playing Counter Fairies correctly, this thing could easily boost itself up by 1500 after you activate all those, so, I mean, it's still a respectable attack boost, but... It's not the main meat of why this card could be potentially good. It's definitely the secondary effect, the Sanctuary in the Sky effect, that allows you to add the cards back. Because, essentially, what you have access to is continually adding back every counter trap that you activate after you activate one. The first counter trap you activate while this card's on the board, if it's the first counter trap you activated all game, it will go to the graveyard and it will stay there. Fair shout. But, as soon as you start activating counter traps of different names, you just get to continuously add these counter traps back. This card's effect isn't once per turn. <laughs> That's kind of, like, obscene, if you actually think about it. The fact that you could have this and Bountiful Artemis on the board, right? And you're negating things with counter traps. You're drawing cards, and then you're just adding the counter traps back. Like, that sounds actually insane. That sounds actually ridiculous. In terms of a vacuum, in terms of a theoretical, I don't know if uh, I don't know if this card is going to be particularly played. I don't see why it wouldn't be, especially considering that you know you have Hecatrice that searches for the Sanctuary in the Sky, which puts a Fairy in Grave for the Angel Knight Arc Parsheth, which is the card that I'm really excited for out of the structure deck, and I'm still waiting for more fairies that you know will support that a bit better. But this card is still perfectly fine. I've been seeing people saying that this card is not really worth the slot and. I mean, it's arguable. I definitely think that it facilitates a lot of advantage in a similar way to Bountiful Artemis. And so, I'm not quite sure why you wouldn't run it, other than the normal summon clogging problem of you don't want too many monsters in your hand. But then you have Ties of the Brethren, which makes this card have a little bit more value. I don't know. Some people have some thought processes that I can't really align myself with, but... Maybe that's because I'm a little bit kooky and insane on the inside. Who knows? But anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this card in the comments down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you think of its effect? All that sort of nonsense. Would definitely be curious to know of your opinions. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Again, let me know what your opinions are in the comments down below. But as always, like, comment, subscribe, do the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description to my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, help continue to make me be able to have time to afford to make this content. Because essentially, it's kind of a little bit of what helps keep this channel going in terms of me being able to consistently try to improve quality content as we go. I'm trying to make the channel better and better with every single video upload, and a lot of people have seen that in the past week of uploads, and a lot of people have given me a lot of praise for it. My viewership and my numbers and my stats have been growing. The engagement with fans and subscribers has been higher. Like, I'm, I'm trying to make this an actual thing. Like, I feel like this channel could be amazing, and I want it to be amazing, and I'm trying to work as hard as I can at it. So, if you want to go to that and check that out and help contribute to it as well as getting some rewards back for yourself, then you'd have my eternal gratitude if that's something you want to go look at and consider contributing to. But other than that, as I've already said, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.